Welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Today is Saturday, the 26th of August, 2023. Going to continue work on attaching the leading edges to the main spar. If you watched yesterday's video, you know that I can't do it completely. I've got some other rivets and a little tool that I need, but I can get uh, inboard and outboard ribs done. And then all of the skin to spar flange ribs, or rather rivets done. So I'll get as far as I can on that today. It's pretty toasty here in the garage, even with the AC going. It's like 107 outside. So uh, we'll see how far we get. And uh, I'll fire up the GoPros and get after it. I did make mention of some maneuvering that had to happen right here um, to be able to hit these rivets. I'll do a special on that. So just stay tuned in the video because at some point I'm going to break off and show you what I'm talking about that and my advice with respect to this bracket that you use to hang the outboard end of the wing on the stand. So this is episode 99. That's a lot uh, and hundreds more to go. So anyways, thanks for being here. Like, subscribe, good stuff like that. And uh, we'll fire up the GoPros and build an airplane. Okay, episode 99 in the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Just very quickly here, I'm going to have a little interruption um, to explain. Well, I'll explain it when I explain it. But uh, this was a two hour and 45 minute work session and pretty successful. Okay, here's what I was talking about earlier. This bracket right here is something that you make so that you can hang the outboard end of the wing on the stand right here. You do it by drilling a couple of, I think, 7 16 holes through the, uh, the web of this spar up here. Got a piece of angle. And then you run those through to bolt it on. But if you look, you can see that these bolts are really close to where that rivet needs to be. You can't, with this here, you can't fit the bucking bar inside there to do that. So if you're making these brackets, you might want to think about where these are positioned and maybe set them a little bit further out. All I have to do is remove this and flip it around. Because this thing is supported at both ends, if I take one out completely to work on that rivet, it doesn't want to twist out. It still stays flat. I was worried that if I took a bolt out that the, the wing would want to rotate and pivot on the other point. It doesn't because it's being held square up there. But save yourself some headache and have these things out of the way to begin with. So there you go. Hopefully somebody will find that useful. Okay, so I'm not sure <laughs> I'm crazy about this split screen thing that I did. Um, First off, the, I've got, I have two GoPro cameras. I have a GoPro 10 and I have a GoPro 7. The GoPro 7 overheated like 30 minutes into this business right here. So I lost it for about a half an hour, started it back up. It worked for the rest of the session. I still had to try to sync them up. The idea I thought would be if I could frame the two cameras up so one would, so that they would only really be framed up for a half screen so we could split it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you guys saw that I did the um, the long versions, the full unedited or unsped up versions of it. I thought this would be a better look at that. We'll see. Um, anywho, uh, what I've been doing here is uh, the end, the, out, the very outboard rib, you're actually going rib, spar, rib. So it's the only spot on this whole uh, wing where you're doing that uh, where you have a rib going through the spar going into another rib and it's a little bit of work um, to get those rivets uh, lined up and then <laughs> well you saw me do it in the other end you saw me doing it here uh, fishing that big 3x rivet gun inside the leading edge skin and then you're completely blind on this one um, you know the left wing has um, it has an access plate in that bay right there, so you can reach straight in from the side, but this one doesn't. 
Um, so you're carefully kind of feeling around to make sure that that rivet set is completely over the rivet that you're driving and then reaching up with a bucking bar from underneath and short version is great success. Um, it worked out really well um, to do the inboard and outboard ribs on both of those wings with driven rivets and then the in the interior four ribs will all be done with uh, LP4 blind rivets next week after the tool arrives so I can set them or rather pull at an angle without angling the inside of the rivet if that makes sense we did it when we it was something that we you we had to do when we were riveting the Z brackets to the the rear baffle of the fuel tanks um, those rivet heads just sit too close to the vertical portion of that bracket and so you need to be able to get the 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 nose, uh, the collet of the uh, rivet puller at an angle without actually causing the rivet itself to bend. We'll talk about more more about it when it happens. So obviously both cameras are back online. I don't know. It's a, it's a funky thing. I don't know if I'm going to try this again. A lot of experimentation uh, here. But what you saw me doing was shuffling Clicos. Um, I wanted to make sure that when I riveted the um, the skins to the spar flange that I didn't create any pillowing. So there's a Clico in every other hole. I'm not doing like every third or every fourth hole. There's a Clico in every other hole. I'll load it up with um, rivets and then go down and squeeze them. And then backfill it. And I think that what I did is on the left wing that I began with, I did the the top side of the left wing, which would be very far left of the screen. Um, I did that whole side, and then once I was comfortable with the workflow and, and everything turned out well, then when I moved on to the bottom of that and both sides of the right wing, I kind of did all of those as one big unit. Um, you have two different size rivets that you're working with in here. Um, you have a billion rivet, actually not a billion, I think that it is oh, 64 uh, rivets per side, and most of them are um, AN426 AD3 4, which probably doesn't mean a lot to most of you, but the length of the rivet is 4, um, four sixteenths. I know that's a quarter, but. It's in sixteenths, four sixteenths, and then um, the there are a handful of spots where there's a rivet that goes through the skin, through the spar flange, and then through a rib flange from the main rib. So those ones are just 0.5 longer, and 426 84-4.5. And so you need to be sure that you um, are mindful of that when you're doing a bunch of rivets like this, so you don't don't just blast straight through and do them all with a short rivet. So um, what I ended up doing when I went onto these other three sides is I just went to, I went and I did all of those longer rivets that, that meet the, the main ribs. I just went ahead and did all of those first. And then I went back and did all of the shorties. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, overall, it was a really successful, Day. Those things, you know, are they're permanently attached. Look, Ma, no Clicos. Um, I still have to wait to get the 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 rib to spar um, attachments done on those four interior ribs. But for all intents and purposes, uh, these things are permanently affixed, and no wonky rivets. Didn't have to drill any out. Um, you may have noticed when I was doing that little. Um, that little bit showing you that the end rib and, and being mindful of how you make that bracket. You might have noticed that that um, main rib uh, flange was not completely flush with the web of the spar. And so that was one spot that, and that was the very first thing I did today when I riveted those. Um, if you saw closely, you would see that I was working inside there using a, um, a trigger clamp to keep that squeezed flat while I did the riveting. So there's a little bit of back and forth um, 
getting that done. But anyways, yeah, it worked out uh, great. I'm really happy about it. So uh, while I wait for those other longer uh, blind rivets to show up and for the little angle, wedge, corner, tool, whatever you want to call it, it's kind of tricky to find. But if, you, if you're looking for it, um, I think I put a link, I'll put a link to it in the description if it's not already there. But if you, it's sometimes they categorize it as an RV12 uh, corner tool because um, that thing is all pulled rivets and they want to <laughs> they want to make their lives easy um, yeah so that par portion of it's done next would be to prep the skins so that we can get those riveted prep the main skins the top main skins so those can be riveted on so super stoked about that that's episode 99 next one will be a hundred which is just crazy thanks for being here We'll catch you on the next one.